This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. This is a very special bottle of wine. And oddly, its story is Samsung specific. I'm really looking forward to telling it on a review of a product that breaks the mold in some way. The Galaxy Watch 3 is not that product. Not because it's not good, but because it's a successful sequel with very few surprises. The Galaxy Watch 3 is actually the second wearable to carry the Galaxy Watch brand name. It comes into clearer focus if you remember 2016's Gear S3, though, which was the first to combine the circular design and rotating bezel of the prior year's Gear S2 with the heartier build and chunkier industrial design that would eventually peak with 2018's Galaxy Watch. With the Galaxy Watch 3, Samsung has maintained the same design language while pulling off a familiar feat in consumer tech sequels. The display is larger than its forerunners, while the casing is thinner, narrower, and lighter. Sure, we're talking millimeters and grams here, but on a product that lives on your wrist, every little bit helps. The old flat side keys have been replaced by proper pushers, one of which is customizable, while the other now carries this fun little branding accent. And while it too has been minimized, I'm very happy to see Samsung retain the physical rotating bezel on its flagship wearable. It was cleverly virtualized on the company's Watch Active 2, but I for one am tired of touchscreens taking over all our tech. Nothing beats the tactile satisfaction of spinning this disc to speed through settings, scroll through SMSs, or set your stopwatch. Speaking of the stopwatch, I'm happy to see that Samsung now includes that and the countdown timer as preloaded apps, which wasn't the case on the last Galaxy Watch. And on the whole, Samsung's Tizen software continues to feel more consistent than my last few Wear OS watches. If you have notifications waiting, an orange badge hovers over the 9 o'clock position, and you can either swipe over on the touchscreen or click the bezel to see what messages have come over from your phone. If you need to respond from your wrist, as on Wear OS, you have the option of either dictating a message with your voice, or Samsung goes an extra step and gives you the option of using T9 to do it as well. This is a much smarter use of space on such a small screen, and for those of us who still have T9 muscle memory from a decade of texting on numeric dumb phones, it's an awesome option. But the Watch 3 also bundles a bummer or two. Check the spec sheet and you won't find it. There's nothing here that jumps out as critically lacking. But even taking a closer look at the battery, there's no reason for concern. 340 milliamp hours is in line with the capacities of Wear OS competitors like the Moto 360 and Scoggin Falster 3. And when using the Watch 3 as I use all my smartwatches, even the one and a half days between charges tracked closely with those competitors. So what's my problem? Well, one of my favorite features of the 2018 Galaxy Watch was its endurance of four days between charges, which let me take a weekend road trip without packing a charger. You now, you can also leave your charger at home with the Galaxy Watch 3, but only if you bring along a Samsung phone with wireless power share, which is really finicky regarding where you put the watch, by the way. Now, a huge part of my battery problem is my insistence on using the always-on watch face because of my belief that a wristwatch should always display the time. But even when I did that on the last Galaxy Watch, folks, I still got three days out of that old one. Slimming down the new device meant reducing the battery size by 27% on the larger model. And my friend Hayato Huseman reports that with his smaller 41 millimeter device, he can only make it a day with the watch face always enabled. Look, if you're content to stick your watch on the charger every night or while you shower, then great, there's no problem here. If you need more staying power though, Samsung just gave up one of its interesting edges over Wear OS, and that's a shame. The Watch 3 does compensate for that omission with more heart, as it leans harder into health tracking. My experience with blood oxygen levels, along with pricing, after a quick word from my sponsor. I'm not traveling as much as I have in years past, but I'm still using today's sponsor just as often. While Surfshark VPN is great for safely browsing on a public hotspot, it's also a powerful tool for preserving your privacy at home. Look, I make my living thanks to the advertising that goes alongside my content, but some ads come with an uninvited guest, malicious software. Surfshark helps fight that malware, and it also hides your IP address, which makes it tougher for bad actors to target you. If you think your internet service provider might be throttling your speeds based on usage, Surfshark can help level the playing field. And it works on your computer, tablet, and your phone. Try Surfshark now at the link below and use promo code Mr. Mobile. You'll get an 85% discount and three additional months for free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, health tracking. 
As this video goes live, the ECG function has yet to hit the watch in the US, despite having cleared the FDA, but the blood oxygen function is up and running. I became well acquainted with pulse oximeters during my stay in the hospital back in February, and the Galaxy Watch 3 has been… inconsistent. Sometimes it matches the monitor I keep at home, and sometimes it's under, by an average of 3-5%. to That's the kind of number that would have made a difference to the hospital doctors who wouldn't let me go home unless my reading stayed above 90% for a 3-minute walk. I'm glad I wasn't wearing this watch. But as the software repeatedly reminds you, this is meant to be a fitness tool, not a medical instrument. And the rest of the fitness stuff, from auto-detecting workouts to periodically prompting you to get off your posterior, works as expected and as designed. And finally, the rest of the suite functions as you'd expect, from the display being bright enough to read in all lighting conditions, to the water resistance and durability ratings, to the Samsung Pay integration, to the removable bands and standard sizes, to making and taking calls over Bluetooth on the watch speakerphone, which is actually a lot less tinny than I anticipated and loud enough to be usable. The Galaxy Watch 3 is available in two sizes, three colors, and a bunch of prices, depending on whether you need just Bluetooth and Wi-Fi or LTE-enabled models. The cheapest you can find one is a penny shy of 400 bucks for the smaller 41mm model, and if you want the one featured in this video, you're looking at almost 430. Adding LTE will take that within Andrew Jackson range of 500 clams. Sure, that puts it on par with the Apple Watch pricing, which may have been the idea, but if you take a look across the Android aisle at Wear OS, you can snap up most of Fossil's Gen 5 lineup for under $295, and the excellent Moto 360 is on sale right now for $199. Now, I still prefer Samsung's snappier software, and its health options are far superior. But Wear OS has improved significantly in recent months as we hit the run-up to a whole new wave of watches running Qualcomm's improved wearable silicon. So definitely cross-shop the Samsung collection with the Wear OS catalog, and if you do decide to pull the trigger on a Galaxy Watch, take advantage of Samsung's trade-in program. They're offering 100 bucks if you trade in your first Galaxy Watch with other options as well. So while the Galaxy Watch 3 doesn't push the frontier enough to justify uncorking my special Samsung wine, it does serve as a needed update to the company's flagship wearable. While I don't think that high price point is quite justified, I can say that if you do have the money or you're going to do a trade-in, you'll be very happy with the smartwatch you'll get for it. This video was made possible by a review sample provided by Samsung, but as always, Mr. Mobile works for you, not the manufacturers. Samsung provided no compensation, no copy approval, and was given no early preview of this video. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Please subscribe if that's the kind of review you'd like to see more of on YouTube, and check out my other smartwatch reviews, which have got a number in the hundreds by now. Until next time, thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe and mask up while you stay mobile, my friends.